guys, welcome back. This is Walissa from Alay Refurbish. And two years ago, I refinished this three drawer chest that's made out of cedar. It smells amazing on the inside. It's also a Cavalier brand and it's lined with walnut veneer. First time transforming it, I stripped the old varnish and I painted those areas that had some damage. But after two years, I haven't had any takers. What this tells me is that I need to try something completely different. If you don't wanna to miss today's furniture transformation, stick around. So where has this guy been hanging out for the past two years? In a corner, at our home office, collecting dust. I have been wondering if what makes this piece so special is exactly the same reason why it hasn't sold. We just don't see these ventilated drawers or flow constructed drawers anymore. It's like my costers. <laughs> Even though I'm gonna refinish it, I'm still protecting it, you guys. Habits, habits. It's a good habit anyway. I really wish you guys could smell this. I love the smell of cedar. Since I made all the repairs the first time I refinished it, all I need to do the second time around is scuff sand with a 220 grit before applying a white primer. I do want to soften this line because I can feel it and you're going to be able to see it. Not sure if you guys notice that there's a keyhole on the right side and it's a bit distracting, but besides that, this is a beautiful art deco piece. The first time I debated about removing the lock, but I think I'll definitely remove it this time. We're gonna be rolling our primer today, rolling our paint. Uh, I'm trying a new paint for this project that I have been wanting to try for a while, so I will let you know my thoughts on it as always so this second time around i want to try something completely different something that i've never tried before so let's chat a little bit more about that while i get rid of all the dust since this guy is short and small in size i wanted to add some pizzazz to make it a little more interesting to the eye and one way i can do that is by adding some depth to the new finish and texture but before heading out to buy all the supplies that i'm gonna be needing for the new look i need to finish cleaning this guy up and for once and for all i need to try to remove that lock As you can clearly see, the lock mechanism runs all the way along the right side. There are also a couple of screws that are attaching this metal bar to the bottom of the chest, which I'm gonna try and see if I can unscrew. Let's see if I can actually remove the lock. Once those were out, with a hammer, I was able to pop the metal bar out and then slid it all the way out. It wasn't so hard. This part here was a little more challenging because I didn't have a lot of room to use a wrench or pliers, but I pushed the lock through and then unscrew this large knot. And finally, I was able to take the ring part out. this is how it was assembled since my little chest of drawers didn't sell all sleek and modern we're still gonna keep it modern but I'm gonna be adding some texture using paper so I'm at the hardware store buying some supplies I'm at Menards which is very similar to a Home Depot store and the same aisle that carries the peel and stick wallpaper also has rolls of paintable texture paper and I wanted to choose something on the modern size I found this guy here of course we're gonna need some glue for it so here's a close-up of the paper. First things first, I measure the front of the drawers where I wanted to glue the paper to. 
Each drawer was a different size. Then I took the roll of paper inside so I could measure and cut it to size. Have I mentioned that this is the first time that I'm using texture paper on a project? And can I be completely honest with you? I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, I can get the paper cut the right size. But I'm not the greatest or the neatest when it comes to applying glue and I'm afraid that I could make a mess for myself. I guess I'm just gonna have to take my time and I'm double checking to make sure that the pieces of paper fit perfectly. It's time. It's time to do those things that make you a little nervous. I'm gonna be using my foam brush to apply the glue and a foam roller to get rid of any air bubbles. Before you attach anything to the wood surface, make sure it's clean, dry, and in good condition. And double check that you're applying sufficient adhesive, paying close attention to the edges and corners. As you can see, I'm not only applying glue to the back of the paper, but also to the wood surface where I'm gonna be attaching the paper to. There was one thing that I searched everywhere that I didn't find any information about. The container doesn't talk about how long does it take for the glue to dry, and neither does the internet. So just to be on the safe side, I let this dry all night. You know, laying something perfectly aligned is not my forte, and maybe that's the other reason why I was so nervous about this, but I wanted to show you that I was able to reposition the paper after not aligning it perfectly the first time. Once I felt like I had laid it down correctly, I ran my hand across it and then used the foam roller a few times to get rid of any air bubbles. Now that we're done with this nerve wracking part, I can move on to covering the hole where the lock used to be. I added a piece of tape before I mix a two-part epoxy called Bundo that dries hard. For safety, I highly recommend wearing gloves and using a respirator while mixing and applying this product. And also work on a well-ventilated area. I'm gonna be opening the door as soon as I'm done applying the paste. Today, gravity was not working in my favor but I kept pushing the product until I felt it was solidifying. The next day, I used an X-Acto knife to cut a tiny bit of extra paper that was on this edge. And just so you know, I speed up the video here, but in reality, I took my time during this time and then I sanded the band of repair. Now that we have concluded all the repairs, I'm getting ready to start applying Binchelac White Base Primer. I use plastic wrap paper to line the tray, but I don't recommend this as the plastic didn't stay in place. Then I pour the primer through the filter to make sure it didn't contain any clumps. And after putting my respirator back on, I started rolling the stinky primer. This one dries really fast, so I was able to apply a second coat after half an hour. I also ended up using a foam brush to make sure that all the grooves were covered up too. Today, I'm gonna be using farmhouse paint for the first time. This paint is an all-in-one. And according to the can, I don't need to use primer before painting. However, since I have the brown tones from the wood and the blue paint from the first time I refinished the chest, I'm hoping that by priming first, I won't need to apply as many coats of the tan leather color I'm gonna be using. I wanted to make the transition between the texture paper and the wood as seamless as possible. So I used a caulking gun and filled in the gap between the wood frame and the paper. I also used a damp cloth to smooth it all out 
and remove any surplus. What's nice about caulk is that it not only improves the look of your piece, but you can also paint it after 30 minutes. To get rid of any soft patch, I'm scuff sanding the primer using a fine sanding block. Then I'm wiping it down one last time before painting. Like I mentioned earlier, it's my first time trying farmhouse paint. The color I'm using is called tan leather and I must say that it lives up to its color name. It truly makes me think of leather. After stirring the paint a few times to mix all its components, my first impression is that the consistency is on the thick side. I thought about thinning it out with water, but I've heard several other furniture finishing friends talk about the hard smooth finish that this paint can dry to that I wanted to put it to the test. That's why I decided not to dilute it and to apply it with a roller. Is it really gonna look as smooth as everyone says it does? After needing to apply two coats of paint, and in some parts even three, coverage-wise this paint is similar to every other paint. However, I have to say that my friends were right, because by the time it dry, and if you look at it, you would have never thought that I rolled the paint out. You would have thought that I spray painted it. That part was impressive. Last minute decision. We're gonna add some glaze because I wanna highlight this texture. I have my wipes ready, my brush, and as usual, I'm gonna mix the surface. The paint has been drying for an hour. Water-based gel stains are a great way to add depth to your piece. These ones are super easy to work with and you can just apply them directly over the paint. When you wipe any extra, try to do it in a straight line as the goal for the finish is to look as even as possible. I like that I can just wipe and wipe until I'm happy with how it looks.
farmhouse paint is an all-in-one and it doesn't need a top coat. Since I'm selling this piece and not sure how the new owner will take care of it and want it to last for a long while, I brushed two coats of General Finishes High Performance Top Coat. The time has arrived and we're gonna do a quick recap of this three drawer chest. This is how he looked two years ago before the makeover. And here he is after the makeover. I thought he looked elegant and handsome, but nobody wanted him. I love that the second time I got a chance to try something new and different. But let me know which one is your favorite in the comments, and I will see you guys next time.